man. We'll get it rolling on the Krug Show Wednesday night, 20 minutes after 7. A little bit behind. It's March the 6th. One day left until Kev's birthday. One day left until the kid's 23rd birthday. Close. How you feeling? How you feeling? Ah, 20 seconds. <laughs> 22nd, 22nd birthday. Who's counting? How are you feeling about it? <laughs> Definitely not you. Uh, I'm you feeling, feeling, I'm feeling good. It. I was there. I was there when you emerged. <laughs> What's going uh, on? Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. You know, it's kind of a slow day in uh, Niners talk. I feel like a little what? slower. Eh, it's a little slower. Slower. Never any slow days in Niner talk. A little bit. Yeah. But uh, you know, we got We got to show up for the people. Um, we got to do the call-in show. We never miss, except when we do. But uh, <laughs> I'll drop the call, I'll drop the call-in link right now, so people can uh, people can join in. Get in here and wish Kevin an early happy birthday. He's twenty-two years old. Twenty-two. Wow. They said you never make it, and you made it. It's amazing. Well, I, I should. Who said that? that? Nobody <laughs> said that. Nobody said that. Um, but we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Go say hi to Damon and Mary. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. We're also brought to you by Marin Auto Glass, 415-883-3030. MarinAutoGlass.com on the web. We're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they'll match you up to your first $100. And we're also brought to you by Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles. Check them out. 205 Cypress Avenue is their address in Pacific Grove, California. Call Anthony Catania. He's at 831-521-5264. Lots of people in the chat. JJ. Happy birthday, Kev. Waylon Wasp. Happy birthday, Kev. Gabriel Falcon. Happy birthday, bud. Third string all pro. Happy birthday, Kevin. Make your bed. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Look at that. Appreciate the, the birthday, the early birthday wishes. Um, what plans do you got on the birthday? You, you and the old lady going out for a little birthday dinner? Yeah, I told uh, my girlfriend. I, I, I told her uh, I want a steak. I want steak. So we're getting some steaks wow. tomorrow. I like steaks. Are you going to buy steaks and make them, or are you going to go to a steakhouse? Uh, I think we're just going to – we're not even going to go to a steakhouse. I think we're just going to go to a restaurant that has some some steaks, you know, serve oh, okay. steaks. We're not going to, like, a fancy steakhouse or anything. Is there a fancy um, steakhouse? Is there a fancy steakhouse? I mean, is there a golden steer? In, there, is, uh, there is no Vegas, uh, you know, comparison to uh, – here in San Luis Obispo, but there are some nice restaurants that serve steak that would probably be in the, you know, 60, $70 range that, but I'm, we're not, I'm not even trying to go to one of those. I just want to go to a, you know, a good, a good restaurant that I can get a good, uh, 40, 40, $50 steak. You know, <laughs> what do you want to get? Like I mean, that. you would, I, we, on, uh, when we went out to the steakhouse in Vegas, the golden steer, I think you got a ribeye, right? Or no? Uh, yeah, no, you got a, yeah. That you was, got prime rib. Yeah, we, no, you got prime rib. We we got the same thing, but yours was red and mine was mine was brown. I remember that. Right. Yours you, was like you, we both got yours prime was very rib. Very rare. <laughs> right. You, but um, then we also went went to the steakhouse in the win, and you I got had a filet a, mignon. Did you, oh, did you get a filet? No, I had a filet. I got a filet. I'd say yeah. honestly, though, I, I really that like some, a pretty I good like place a, too. I like a New York steak. I just I always enjoy a New York steak. At least at least when I cook it, I always enjoy a New York steak, even though that's not like the top of the line cut. Well, every everybody give Kev a, a like and subscribe on the channel today for his birthday. Um, we got this one from Monty says, Larry, read this happy birthday in Samoan to Kev. Manuia Lu Aso Fanau. Which, if I just called, is Kev that the, is that the Washington guard uh, tackle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you in the NFL draft, Monty? <laughs> um, oh, what's, what's the uh, what's the guy? His name's Alu. Whale and wasp. Maybe some pork. Oh, that's not good. Come on, 
Right. Doc D. Lou says ribeye or porterhouse. Third string all pro says ribeye all day. I'm thinking country ribeye with the bone. Bone in country ribeye. Dry aged. Ooh, maybe some garlic butter, some mashed potatoes. Yeah, no, I'm just going to... Maybe a little Caesar salad. Just going to relax a little bit, but uh, but yeah, next week is big finals. A lot of finals next week, so it's going to be... Steak is breaking. Channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scott Shandell says, happy birthday, dude. How did he know that was your name? Um. All right. Kev, we normally go on Wednesday nights where... Normally, I produce all kinds of content, questions, co- you know, topics. I never let you down. I always bring you topics. I bring the audience Niner-related questions, thought-provoking. On Wednesday nights, I just show up. You do the rest. So what's it going to be, kid? Um, we got the Cosmos's Can't Go Wrong With Butter. Go to, go to uh, Ruth Chris. They love their butter there. <laughs> Um, yeah, Brandon so, Jones says, I've uh, never seen Larry smile so much. It's my kid's 22nd birthday. And last night we went with, <laughs> we went to 40,000 subs, largely, largely because of that guy right there. So I'm in a good mood today though. The, I you, normally, I like, I would have been in a better mood if, um, it hadn't been so rainy because I wanted to see Northgate play Cal high in, in San Ramon. I was getting ready to go down there for a three o'clock start. It was a nice day earlier in the day, sunny. We get to like 2.40, it starts to rain. Rained out. Rained out. So Ben was rained out. So I'm, I am I could be even a, in a better mood, but yeah, we're at 40,000 subs. My kid's about to turn 21. I mean, 23. Two. I mean, 22. 22. And uh, the Giants are playing well. The Niners free agency is around the corner. The Giants are uh, playing well? So, well... I mean, better. I mean, I'm a little bit more hopeful. They're sorry. They're not losing every I, game. All I saw was their their starting shortstop is bad in point seventy seven. Oh, seventy seven. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, the starting shortstop is going to be Nick Ahmed. <laughs> yeah, not Put Marco that one Luciano. Right down. It's not going to be Marco Luciano. <laughs> Should we talk some? Marco Niners, Luciano's though? not hitting. Not hitting. But um, did the Giants win today? They play tomorrow on TV. Are they? Yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. They play tomorrow on TV. Um, what do they do today? Let me just check. Just double checking. They didn't play today. Giants with the rare cactus off day. So maybe that's why I'm feeling good. They're not. They didn't even play today. Well, uh, you want to talk to uh, Miners? Yeah, let's do it. Scott Schendel says, "Larry, aren't you Jung Ho Lee's biggest fan?" I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I got hope. I can hope, can I, that he's better? I, I'm just, I'm skeptical. Anytime we're giving KBO players 113 million dollars guaranteed, I am nervous. And I will admit, if my job were on the line, based on Jung Hoo Lee being worth or not worth 113 million, I would be very nervous right now. Very nervous. But the channel's uh, success or failure is not predicated on Jung Hoo Lee. Thus. I'm optimistic. All right, Kev. Question number one in Ninerland. What's it going to be? Well, I just thought uh, as I was planning for the show, when you when you kick your feet up on a Wednesday and let me do all the planning, uh, what I was oh. frantically pl- planning was in about seven days, free agency begins, right? And right. that's kind of the beginning of the roster building for the Niners for next season. That's yes. when the, all the pieces are going to start falling into place. Uh, that's when the season begins. That's when the actual official calendar season begins, right? That is, is that March 13th. I think that's when yep. the new NFL season begins or year begins. So I called the show or I named the show, How Will the 49ers Build Their Roster? And that's the topics I'm going to ask you today. It's going to be centered around how will they how will they build out their roster? The first topic I'm going to ask you about is – a little bit less serious, and I just saw this today. Um, it's not necessarily exactly about um, roster building, but it is interesting, and I would like to see your opinion on it here. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, this was brought to or was shared by ML Football. It says, 
According to NFL Network, multiple uh, multiple head coaches were saying that the 49ers would have won multiple Super Bowls by now if they had drafted Mac Jones. What what is your uh, what's your take on that? I, when I saw that, I just thought there's just no way that could possibly possibly be true. Uh, Mac Jones is just not is not that guy, you know. I, and I don't see him being that much better with Mac, uh, you know, with the Niners than he was with the Patriots. But according to multiple coaches in the NFL, Mac Jones could have won Super Bowls here. What do you think? Well, he processes what he sees and the ball comes out on time and with accuracy. So in a lot of ways, he does a lot of things that Brock Purdy does minus the mobility. Yet now you can get Mac Jones away from new England for like a fifth or sixth round pick. Um, because what he sucked, he had a good rookie year and then, then they just kind of fell apart and, um, I don't know if he stopped working at it or if it was the lousy coordinators, the lack of weapons, um, but he hasn't been very good the last couple of years. One, um, I, I can understand why they're saying that. I, I mean, I absolutely, I don't agree, um, but um, I think Mac Jones would have been a really good pick in hindsight because I think the Niners need somebody who can process what he sees and get the ball out on time. And this guy can process what he sees and gets the ball out on time. I, I, I think Mac Jones in a 49er uniform would have been very, very successful. And may, who knows? Maybe we'll see it. It's, it's definitely a possibility. They're going to have to, they have a couple of quarterback slots that they need to fill. Um, that kind of brings me to my next topic. I, I want to play a game called keep or walk. Okay. And it's basically, I'm going to give you a list of two names, right? And you have to decide whether you keep them or which name you keep and which name you let walk. And then you have to tell me why. Okay. Okay. And, and, and saying, saying no to both is not an option. Saying yes to both is not an option. Okay. Don't um, put like people in our family on this. Yeah. So Your wife. Them. Or my brother. No. <laughs> I'm keeping them. Mom? Keeping or... them both. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do that. No. Let's not start a civil war. No, no. But uh, some of these you may be like, well, keep I or walk. Both keep, yeah, keep or walk. Keep or walk. Okay. All right. First off. Let's get into it. We're getting into it. <laughs> Chase well, Young. Very or... slow, this is a very slow developing live stream today. It's taking us a Chase long Young time. or Clellan Farrell. We're 13 minutes into this thing, and we're still kind of messing around. Are we ready? Chase Young or Clellan Farrell? Okay. Uh, sounds like they want to keep Chase Young, but I wouldn't do it at any real price. Cleveland Farrell I like, but I think you can do better in the draft. So I'm going to say keep Chase Young. And let Cleveland Farrell walk. Really? After the season, after what happened with Chase Young, and I, I, I think I'd go Farrell just because he seems a little bit more like a productive player at this point. I know, but he, he's never going to be what you want because he just doesn't have enough speed. I think you can do better um, with with. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather. I want. I'm aiming higher than Clee Farrell. Clee Farrell's like one of those guys. Hey, man, you're glad you have him in season. Cause he's like kind of useful today, but I'm in, in May, in March, April and May, I'm dreaming big dreams. I want, I want guys who are explosive coming off the edge. Uh, if I can't find explosive guys, I'll settle for Clee Farrell, but I'm not looking for Clee Farrell in March. That's for sure. Okay. So I, I, I think Chase Young, I think Chase Young, Maybe get to one year, make make good deal, and let's see if you can get him rolling, you know, for the full year. Why not? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't. A I bigger don't talent. Yeah, I mean, that's everyone knows that. Uh, well, I mean, they both were drafted very high in high in the draft. That's because was Farrell um, drafted fourth overall. Mike Mayock's a jackass. <laughs> you know, that's why Mike. Yeah, that Mayock. was a questionable. No. That was a questionable pick at the time. Terrible. Very questionable. Terrible. There was a lot of questionable picks in that draft. I remember Daniel Jones was drafted like third or something like that. And everyone was like, what? Daniel yeah. Jones? 
That was a questionable pick, and that obviously didn't really work out. But Mike Mayock went with Clee Farrell off of he liked him more than he liked who he was as a person. Okay, but you know you're in the top five. You gotta you gotta get guys who have special traits, and Clee's Clee doesn't have special traits. Clee has good work ethic, um, and I like Clee a lot. I think he's a good dude, but. Um, if I can get Chase Young at a reasonable price, I want Chase Young. Yeah, I like the idea of Chase Young on a one-year deal. I, I that is one a good, year that, prove it the, deal. Yeah. Yep, a prove it deal because it seems like he he obviously had those effort issues, and there's been questionable things about said about him from coming from Washington. If you can get him on a on a deal where he has to prove something, I, I, you know, especially at a reasonable price, I think it's worth it. Um, yeah. on to the second keeper walk. Brandon Allen or Sam Darnold? Who you keep and who you let walk? This one's easy. I'm I'm keeping Brandon Allen and I'm letting Sam Darnold walk. Okay. Um, and I'm the only question is, am I keeping Brandon Allen as my two, and I'm going to get a th- a raw rookie to be the three, or am I keeping Brandon Allen as my three and I'm getting a a Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, young veteran to be the two? Um. I'm I'm kind of intrigued a little bit by Mac Jones at this point, so I I might I might go in that direction. Uh, but I, I'm okay going with Brandon Allen as the two, and and you know drafting Joe Joe Milton or a rookie of some kind, you know as well. Last year, Sam Darnold made about five about five point five million, five point eight right. million. So. If you can, if you can get, if you can get that kind of money, if you can get, him, you can get him for a decent amount of money. I, I see. I, I think you could bring him back. You know, he knows the system. I, I don't. You know, obviously, there's other teams that are looking at him. There's like there's there's the Vikings, right? That uh, have a lot of interest in Sam Darnold, but I don't see any Do reason why. You, I'm, I'm hearing the the rumor I heard was that the Vikings have a lot of interest in Trey Lance. That is, you I heard also, they have I've interest in Sam too. Darnold. Yeah, I could I could find it if you want me to. But um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've let's, I think Sam Darnold has done enough to improve his, you know, value around the league that somebody will offer him some starting job. Maybe it'll be one of the you know, or 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 maybe a little bit more money. Maybe a, a real opportunity to compete for a number two. You know, with an iffy starter. I mean. Right now, he's sitting behind a top 10 starter who's 24 and doesn't miss games. So I don't know if Sam Darnold's going to be happy here in that situation for another year. Now, Zach Wilson or Mac Jones may be because they've been on some bad teams and they just want to go somewhere where they can kind of salvage their career and maybe they would look at San Francisco as an option. But I think, I don't know, Darnold seems to me like he wants to be a starter, which is, you know, that's obvious, right? That's good. He should want to be a starter. Um, But I don't think it's going to be here. So my guess is Sam moves, Allen stays, and then the question is, does Allen stay as a three and they get a two, or does Allen stay as a two and get a pay raise and they look for a, you know, day three or post draft rookie to man that third spot. That's the question. Uh, this is what we were just talking about. Uh, according to Alec Lewis on Sam Darnold potentially becoming the next quarterback for the Vikings, says, quote, This is the name that comes up the most in discussions with people within the industry. So yeah. apparently there's a lot of chatter with Sam Good Darnold. Good for him. I hope he I hope he moves on. I mean, I like I don't think Sam Darnold's is a great quarterback, um, but um, he was fine this year and he was a good teammate. All right. Um, this one is, you know, Warner or Dwelly. Who would you rather have Charlie Warner or Dwelly? Charlie Warner. Charlie Warner is a blocker. He's pretty tenacious. He's kind of physical on special teams. Dwelly, I think I, you know, I think I can find replacements for Dwelly. Yeah. 
Ross Dwell is what your pa- your pass catching tight end who didn't really catch that many passes. Right. Right. Yeah, that one's not a super exciting one. Uh, Matt Pryor or John Feliciano? John Feliciano. Matt Pryor stinks. Um, he's slow footed. His uh, his energy levels low. Uh, Feliciano can play center. He can play guard. Um, Feliciano actually graded out pretty highly this year, so I'm going to yeah. go Feliciano. No, Feliciano was a surprise. I mean, you you did you liked him a lot coming from the Giants. You know, he's he's a mauler. You know, he's He's big dude, and he uh, he he's he did really well at the right guard position, especially when Spencer Burford went down. Because that's why he can't he start he came in early in the year because Burford went down. Is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, Burford shared last year right guard with Brunskill. This year, it looked like they were going to give it to Burford full time, but then after a few weeks, they're like, "Well, he no, he's going to share with Feliciano." And then there were times where I thought Feliciano outplayed him. I think overall Feliciano is just a more assignment sound than um, than Burford. Um, and I like Feliciano at center if they move on from Brendel. He also gives you a backup at center. Yeah. Um. Now this one, oh, the, Demetrius Flanagan fouls or Oren Burks, which. LB three. Neither. I want neither. <laughs> They're you both neither? solid. I want neither though. It's like no more. Go get young linebackers who can start. Um, you've got Curtis Robinson right there. He can do what those guys can do. Um, Oren Burke saw you saw in the Super Bowl that he was a dramatic step down from uh, the starting caliber linebackers. I'd rather see those guys gone so that that forces them to play Jalen Graham and D Winters because I think Jalen Graham and D Winters are better than those guys. Um, so and and I like some of the linebackers in the draft a lot. Um, and I just I'd rather go with, you know, I'd rather go with linebackers who can be linebackers from scrimmage than special teams linebackers that I ask to play from scrimmage. Um, you know, Burks, I don't think is great from scrimmage. Flanagan Fowles is, you know, I don't think is great from scrimmage. I'd rather see them force feed the young guys and then lean on into the draft at linebacker and get some more linebacker speed. Would you, okay, but if you had to choose one, I, I would choose I'm not, one. I, I, I would choose Flanagan Fowles because I think he's cheaper. Okay. I, I, I mean, look at it. Oren Burks, you know, they targeted him nine times in the Super Bowl. They completed nine passes. Uh, yeah, I no, I, do... he's not. A, he's not your starting linebacker. That's for sure. Yeah, he's a special teamer. But I mean, um, Curtis Robinson can fill that role for cheaper. OK. Uh, now, these are two guys that might just retire. But Deshaun Gibson or Logan Ryan. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> um, you know, what was it? Walk, walk. Is that what it is? <laughs> what game walk. are we playing? Keeper walk, Keep. walk. I mean, Logan Ryan, no, and um, Tayshawn Gibson, no. Double no, and nothing against those guys. You can do better. You can do better than that. Yeah. You've got, you've got, um, Hafanga, and you've got who's coming off an injury. So when's he going to be ready? That's one. And then you have um, Jair Brown. Jair Brown, who's a starter. And then you have Odom, who's a great special teamer. And then the rest of the safety group should be young guys, not veterans. And they have Taylor Hawkins. I like Taylor Hawkins. He's fine to compete. Um, And then just go draft another safety or two. Yeah. No, I know. I've seen some people complaining in uh, comments, being like, "Oh, they don't need a draft of safety." It's like, oh, they they kind of do. They kind of need. They definitely need some depth depth at safety if they're not bringing back their, you know, because they have they have an old they had an old secondary or an old safety group with between Logan Ryan and Deshaun Gibson, and they're going to walk. So well, and and Hafanga is not going to be ready week one. I don't think. Right? He tore his ACL. Yeah, isn't he going to? And he tore his ACL in the middle of the year. So he probably you want to have another young safety there for sure. And you've got 
Hawkins and, and, um, you know, you've got George Odom, who's a really good special teamer. So I just think you need one, one more safety and it's probably more of a strong safety, but, um, it would be nice if you could get an all around type player, but yeah, they need one or two more safeties, but they're young guys. They have, they should be young draft picks. All right, last one in our keep or walk game. Randy Gregory or Javon Kinlaw? You keeping who you let him walk? I'm keeping Kinlaw and I'm letting Randy Gregory walk. I just seem like Gregory at 245 just seemed like he got just swallowed up by offensive tackles in this front. And um, I thought Gregory... If you'd asked me this question in November, I would have thought it would have been Gregory. But Kinlaw, you know, is a big body. He, it's hard to find interior guys. Um, you know, I I could see them moving on from both. But if it's one or the other, I'll take Kinlaw back. Yeah, uh, they don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of options right now to tackle. Right, they have Armstead, and then they have. Who am I blanking on? I mean, they have Hargrave. Well, they have Hargrave and Armstead, know. but Armstead's, you know, is Armstead they don't have a lot of run stuffer. Yeah. Yeah. Armstead has injury. They don't I have mean, anybody who can really play the run inside. Right. Yeah, Armstead, I, I saw that he, there's, there's going to be decision a decision made on his injury, whether they do like a complete restructure or a partial restructure or something like that related to his injury. And it would either take him a few months to recover, or he could be out for the first couple games. That's what his doctor D, said. D. Lou here says, go get Christian Wilkins. I mean, to me, if there's one surprise so far, um, you say, well, give me a surprise thus far. It's that the Dolphins did not franchise tag Christian Wilkins. And Christian Wilkins is a really good football player, and I could see the 49ers signing him. Um, he can, he scheme versatile. He can play inside at tackle. He can play outside at end. Um, he can play in a three, four, he can play in a four, three. Uh, I like, I like Christian Wilkins. I, I'd go after Chris Jones, but doesn't sound like Chris Jones is going to leave KC, but if you can get Christian Wilkins to leave Miami, heck yeah, I'd go, I'd go sign him. That was kind of my next question here because that was our game there. But my next question was, you know, the franchise tag deadline has came and went. So we have a good idea of now uh, what players are kind of hitting the free agents, free agency. Uh, with, with, the, with the players like, um, you know, Josh Allen and who else got tagged? Legarius Sneed got tagged. Matabuke. Uh, Matabuke uh, got Legere tagged. Sneed. Um, you know, those, I those was, players got tagged. So with, with the, with the new like, list, here of players, it is. Like, this is the list. Chiefs tag Legereus Sneed. Pats tagged Kyle Duggar. Bucks ta tagged Antoine Winfield Jr. Bears tagged Jalen Johnson. Jags tagged uh, Josh Allen. Ravens tagged Justin Matabuke. Panthers tagged Brian Burns, which makes Brad unhappy. Bengals tagged uh, T Higgins. So those are the guys who got tagged. And I don't um, understand why the Panthers are tagging Brian Burns. It's like, what are you? Are you trying to win or are you trying to lose? Because they're, they're <laughs> he's a good player, but you mean you just because they're so far away from they're just it's just it's never going to work out, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, so what you resign him to a three year deal, you're good in five, you know? I don't know, I don't know. Free, free Brian Burns. Free him. <laughs> hey, give me 30 seconds. Can you fill for 30 seconds? I'll be right back. Sure. Uh, we are still waiting on call. So if you want to drop, if you want to drop into the call room, we're going to take calls in probably about probably about 10 minutes. So if you want to talk Niners. Or honestly, if you want to talk about anything sports related, hop on in. Uh, and I'm I'm just gonna go through the chat right now since Larry left. Let's see here. 
49ers throwback says, give me Daniil Hunter. You know, I don't know. What is Daniel Hunter looking for these days? Greenard is only 26. I like Jonathan Greenard a lot. He was very productive for, for the Texans this year, played under uh, the Texans scheme. So he obviously has some crossover there because of D'Amico. Someone says, okay, let's roast Larry. Yeah, let's let's uh let's let's roast Larry. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, Larry's about to let one out. I can just I have a feeling. Oh, he's back. All right, there you go. Had to get some new water, man. Fresh glass of water. Right, right, right. Good, 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 good. Um long stream. Well, I, was... I got gotta make sure I'm properly hydrated. <laughs> I was just going to say with the the list of free agency or free agents that are currently out there, it's a big name free agent that the 49ers could real realistically get, you know, I mean, I guess last year, if I asked you this question before the free agency began, Javon Hargrave probably wouldn't have been on their realistic free agent targets and they went out and got him. So I guess anyone's really available, but realistically, who could you see the 49ers pursuing? with this list um well it's interesting i would say a corner or a defensive lineman probably would be who would be on the list um and they always seem like they go for one top tier guy now greg papa was talking today maybe it's daniel hunter he thinks it's maybe daniel hunter that would be an interesting one interesting um let me just take a look at the list. What's, a, what's the market agents. value for Daniil Hunter, though? The market value for Daniil Hunter is $20 million annual. That's, that's pretty high. But Well, I mean, they, they went after a big-name guy last year. I mean, the big-name guys, Chris Jones, Daniil Hunter, um, Who else could I see? Uh, I, I put Darius Williams out there earlier today, but he's not a big name guy. Um, it's hard. Kenny Moore, I think, is an interesting name. Could be a nickel, nickel corner. I like I Kenny Moore that. a lot. Yeah. No, and that's Moore and that's a position sense. that they could they could use, especially is if Demo goes outside. If Demo goes outside, and you have Kenny Moore in the slot. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good. That's a pretty good cornerback room. Chauncey Gardner Johnson is out there. He's a big time player. I mean, look at what he he's done Demo, the last though. couple of years. He hates. Demo. Get over it. Tell him to get over it. My God, <laughs> Jesus, get over it. That's what I would say. Do you like? Uh, do, you, do you like bringing in Lake and Tomlinson? No, no, because it's, it's, he made too much money. He's not going to be happy at this at the dollar figure he would be at. With, with the Niners at this point. So I don't like him. I'd rather go Nick Allegretti and get somebody who's on the uptick, who's who didn't make a ton of money. I think Allegretti makes some sense. Um, you know, uh, Damian Lewis is a is a is a, a player that I think makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, the guard for Seattle, he's a wide body. Um, to me, these are the free agents that I'd be looking at. I'd be looking, these are the guys that I, this is my list of free agents at the top that if I'm the 49ers, I'm, list, I'm looking at Chris Jones, just because just the idea that he, you could get him out of Kansas city would be a huge shift in the balance of power in the league. So I, I got to try for Chris Jones. If I can't get Chris Jones, I'm going for Christian Wilkins. He's only 28. He can play anywhere. Three technique. He can play nose. He can play to the, on the edge. Um, He's really, really nice. Then I'm looking at Bryce Huff of the Jets. Very, very solid edge rusher. Jonathan Greenard of the Texans. Uh, another edge rusher in his prime. Kenny Moore, who I just told you of the Colts, um, who's a tremendous defensive back, one of the top slot corners in pro football. 
Um, maybe Devin White from Tampa. I just love Devin White. Darius Williams from uh, Jacksonville. Leonard Floyd might be a guy that I would have interest in. Edge rusher from Buffalo. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry as a center from Denver. Noah Fant, a, a tight end fullback from Seattle. Um, Damian Lewis. C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Aziz al -Shair. Uh, maybe Darnell Savage, Jeremy Chin, and Willie Gay. Those are the guys I have interest in. Um, I want younger. I want younger guys who can add some speed to my defense. I probably want to get somebody on my front line. So, like that's why Jones and Wilkins are at the very top. Uh, because if you can get Jones or Wilkins at the top then you don't have to go defensive line in the first round. You could go offensive line uh, or corner or, you know, best player available. So um, that's how I'd play free agency. I don't see, you know, there's a bunch of offensive guards that are interesting. And I would definitely, you know, do my due diligence on those offensive guards because I think yeah. there's some, some good ones out there. Um, Robert Hunt. Robert Hunt is one of them. Uh, Nick Allegretti. Um, Damian Lewis. Um, let's Michael see. Michael Wenu. A Wenu's not bad. Um, he's good. I he's, think he's really good. I like Yeah, him. I mean, um, I thought I made a list here. Let me see if I can find my list. But yeah, no, uh, uh, guards and free agency, there's a few of them. And, and I think you can, you can sit there and shop for some guards and free agency. Uh, but in, um, in the, if you want to tackle, you're going to have to go to go to the draft, right? There are no real tackles in the draft. So like guards wise, Cody Whitehair, Kevin Zeitler, um, Pretty good player. At, I, I like Nick Allegretti from the Chiefs. I think he would be a great pickup. Um, Damian Lewis from Seattle, I think, is a real would be a really good pickup. Uh, Sadiq Charles from the Commanders is only is only like twenty five years old. I think that's an interesting one. Uh, you sit on Wenu from New England. So he plays yeah, I mean, right I, tackle for them, but he also is more of like a right guard. He's he's better yeah. at right guard than he is at right tackle. But so guard, I think you could you could go in, into the into the um, free agent market and find a good guard. And my first choice would be Nick Allegretti. Why? Because I think Allegretti's got the championship pedigree. He's smart. He's tough. He'll play hurt. Um, he wants to establish himself as a starter on a on a on a good team. He's already won three rings with the Chiefs. I think he's, you know, I think he's would be affordable, um, you know, humble, tough guy. He, I think he's he, the top they went after they went after him last year, and he decided to stay in Kansas City because he was having twin daughters. But now I think he's ready to re, ready to leave. Kevin Zeitler's out there. I don't know if you have any interest in Zeitler from the from the Ravens, but he he's tough. He's 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 almost he's almost thirty four though. So he's pretty old, yeah. but so it'd be like a, you know, you know what? He's one thing that nails I, though. I would be interested in Kevin Zeitler. I think he's, he's a culture changing player. Um, and I, I think to be completely honest, you, honest with you, if you said to me, what do the Niners really need? They need to get a little tougher on the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's why I want Chris Jones because Chris Jones is, you know, he comes off the field and just demands everybody's going to play at my breakneck speed or I'm going to kill you. And I like that. And I, I just really think that they the Niners could use some old fashioned tough guys. And Zeitler is definitely that. So even though he's 34, I would take Kevin Zeitler. I would. One thing I saw brought up that I think is pretty that I don't know, I just agreed with was that. You know, just a reminder that a lot of the 49ers protections are called out by the center. So if you let Brenda walk, it's not, I mean, it's it's doable, but you don't necessarily want to replace him with a center. You know, you want to be able to replace him with someone who 
who's smart. And it reminds me of Alex when they had Alex Mack. Remember when they had Alex Mack at center? Yeah. A couple of years ago. And there was a lot of, I remember there was a lot of, a lot of stuff written about how, you know, he was really great. He was a real key of that offensive line that year because he was able to identify, you know, blitzer, free blitzers and just, he, he was able to just kind of lead that line. And, you know, maybe you move Feliciano, you sign Feliciano and move him to center. But if if you're going to let Brenda walk, I, I would think it'd be, it'd probably be a good decision to, re, you know, replace him with someone who, who knows what they're doing. That's for sure. Well, no question. But I mean, you do have some in-house candidates. You have Feliciano could be a center. I think you could move Colton McKivitz from right tackle to center. Um, I think Ben Barch could play some center. And I think Nick Sakel can play some center. Yeah. Nick so Sakel. I'm not as concerned with Brendel. I, I think the combination of Feliciano, Zakel, Barch, and McKivitz, and anybody that you draft or sign, um, I think you can get I think you can move on from Brendel and be okay. Yeah. Um all right. Well, should we move on to our our last our last topic here before we hit the calls? Sure. Uh, if you want to call if you want to call in, make sure you use the link in the chat. Uh the link in the chat and we'll take your calls. Uh so last thing for the roster building live stream where we build the roster. I was thinking that we just we just do that. We build the roster. And there is a spreadsheet that um our friend David Lombardi and Matt Barrows have built together. And it's it's kind of a yearly thing that they do. And basically what they do is they make a spreadsheet with all the 49ers active players, uh the empty spots uh, spots that the roster currently has, and it's all calculated out for you. And all you have to do is pick the players and it, you can, you can play with it to see if it uh, works with their salary cap. So I'll just, I'll just share the screen and we'll go through it one by one. And we'll, uh, we'll just uh, choose, you know, where we're putting the roster to together right here. We're putting the roster together. Are you ready to do that? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Born. Ready. All right. <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll be taking calls right after this. We'll be taking calls right after this. So when you're, uh, if you want to call in, drop in right now. We'll be taking your calls shortly. All right. So start it off the quarterback room. What do you want to do with the quarterback room? Your options are, I'm not sure if you can see this, but your options are, you know, all the free agent quarterbacks right now. So anywhere from Kirk Cousins to Tyrod Taylor, Sam Darnold, Drew Locke, Brandon Allen, Zach Wilson via trade. Russell Wilson, you if 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 a name is that isn't on here that you want on the team, you can just say budget veteran, or you can draft. So those are kind of the options, and that'll work for pretty much every slot. So what what do you want to do at quarterback too? Okay, um, I'm saying goodbye to Sam Darnold, and I'm going with um, I'm gonna make I'm I'm I think I'm gonna look for a young veteran. I think I'm either going to trade for Zach Wilson or trade for Mac Jones. I'm I'm I, I I'm okay giving. They got eleven draft choices. I think you can get those guys for a day three pick. I'm I'm going after one of those guys as a day three pick, and I'm I'm making them the, uh, you know, I'm I'm, in, I'm I'm I want a little bit better of a quarterback room than just a rookie, and um, I think I'd probably if I could find if I could get Mac Jones for like a six round pick. I think I'll take Mac Jones for a six round pick. All right. I like it. You're making it, you're making it interesting. I'll do, I don't have Mac Jones here. So do you want me to do Zach Wilson? What do you mean? You don't have him. Yeah. You can put Zach Wilson there, but or I, I can I, do budget. I, I can do budget veteran budget veteran would be a $1 million cap hit. I don't know if that would. Well, I mean, Mac I, I know that Mac Jones, they say is available and I, you know, the only thing question is, is what kind of culture guy is Mac Jones? What kind of attitude would he have? You, he, you know, is he going to be a bad attitude? Um, but I think he's so desperate that he won't be able to have a bad attitude. And um, I think Mac Jones, uh, Bro Brock Purdy, Mac Jones, and um, Brandon Allen is a good quarterback room. Oh, so you want you want to keep Brandon Allen? I'm okay. keeping Brandon Allen as my third, but I would like to trade for a young veteran like those two guys. And I'm fine with Kyle, with Zach Wilson because I think Zach Wilson's going to be a 
good quarterback eventually. And I'm fine with Mac Jones because I'm not worried about him having a bad attitude. Um, and I think there's something to be said for a smart guy who processes what he sees and the ball comes out on time. And um, I'm eager to see what it would look like, you know, backing up Brock Purdy. And I think it would be good for Mac and good for the Niners to have a have a backup quarterback they could win games with. And I really think they could win games um, with with Mac Jones just finding guys out of the backfield. All right, let's move on to the running backs. Do you want to restructure Christian McCaffrey to make his cap hit only six million? Yeah, yeah, I would. Okay. I mean, it seems like um, a no brainer, right? Unless you're worried about future. Yeah. Future. Do you want to cut? And, uh, do you want to cut Kyle Huszczyk though? Yes, I do. I mean, I mean, I don't I mean, you know, heck, if I mean, if Kyle, if you're watching this, I mean, I'm, I'm, I love you, brother, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think this is, it's time to, it's time. He, you know, he makes a lot of money. He's made a lot of money. He's a great Niner. Um, it's time for them to get younger in the, in the offensive backfield. And I've got some, a couple guys here that I like that I think, um, I can get on day three and I want to go in that direction. If you're going RB four, who are you selecting? Are you going in the draft? Are you gonna you gonna sign a free agent, undrafted free agent? I'm going in the draft. And I, I'm probably you? going well, I'm probably going in like fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth in that range. Um, I'm looking for a couple guys that I really like. Um like I really like Frank Gore's kid quite a bit. I really, really like Blake Watson. Who's a scat back, about 190 pounds, 5'9 scat back. Uh, very explosive. I really like Tyrone Tracy from Purdue. I think he's a good solid NFL back. But I'm the guy, there's two guys I'm looking for. One is is Isaiah Davis from South Dakota State, who's 6'1, 220. Um, kind of like Dejon Edwards from Georgia as well. But the other guy I'm looking for is Isaac Garendo. Who's six oh, the guy that had the point. incredible, he had an incredible yeah. combine. He ran four three. He he ran four three at two hundred and twenty pounds. To four, me, three, if I'm going to get rid of, yeah. yeah, if I'm going to get rid of juice, I want to make sure that my fullback is a guy that nobody can cover. And so Garendo, who is a you know more of a one back, and Isaiah Davis, who's more of a one back, you know, in this case they're 220 pounds and I feel like they I'm going to take a chance with using those guys as fullbacks. Um, they're really backup running backs, but I'll stay with them as, and I'll use them as backup fullbacks because they're too such difficult covers for the defense that I think that's, that's what I want to go. I want speed everywhere. You can inject speed and Garendo and, uh, Isaac, Isaiah Davis are the two guys that I'm, most most thinking about in the in that spot um all right i'll put fifth round draft pick as a placeholder and we can change okay. it if we if we decide to I mean, they don't even have a else. fifth but yeah okay uh it's a, it says they have pick 175 which is well like, i mean I, I um i thought they had two fourths and two six but it doesn't matter well that's fine if it, if it says fifth then they're fifth um all right let's go to the receivers do you want to do anything with Debo or Ayuk? You trading, extending, uh, extending Brandon Ayuk would save eight million. Um, if you trade Debo Samuel, you lower it by seven million. Any? I mean, I don't. I don't want to. I think in this situation, this is a very difficult one. I think they're going to keep Debo and Ayuk. And maybe trade Jawan Jennings because I think Jennings may get a restricted offer that's attractive. Um, and you know, I, I think Jennings is the guy that's probably going to move. That'd be my guess. Okay. So Jennings doesn't come back. Who do you get as your wide receiver three? Are you going to the draft? Or are you going? Are you going to go sign a free agent? Um, for wide receiver three, I'm going into the draft. And um, you like Leggett, don't you? You like Leggett. 
I love, yeah, I mean, if you can get Xavier Leggett, that would be a nice one. Brian Thomas would be a really nice one. There's a bunch of guys, though. Ricky Pearsall from Florida is damn good. Roman Wilson from Michigan is really good. But I would try to get Xavier Leggett, and then if I can't go that route, maybe I go Malachi Corley from Western Kentucky. Uh, maybe I go Jerry's kid. Maybe I go Luke McCaffrey. I like Marcus Rosemi, Jack Saint from Georgia quite a bit. Um, those are the guys that stand out. If there's, if there, there's one other guy who I'm just super enamored with, just, he's so freaking fast. I mean, I, first of all, I like Malik Washington, the tiny little receiver from Virginia. Very, very, uh, very good receiver. I mean, just incredible, but Jaquan Burton from Florida Atlantic really like him and Tyler Harrell, who's a, just a ridiculous burner from Louisville and Miami. I'm looking for Tyler Harrell on day three, and I'm looking for that just explosive. I realize Danny Gray is that guy, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy. Tyler Harrell maybe can stay healthy. He's had his own injury problems, but he is a difference-making speed guy. I mean, his he's the kind of guy that just takes the top off the defense. And I, as much as you know, they've had Gray, he hasn't been able to get healthy and get out there. Their offense would benefit greatly if they had that space creating burner. And so Tyler Harrell is you got to see the film on that guy. Go 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 YouTube Tyler Harrell highlights and watch how watch the way he runs. I mean, he is amazing. Amazing. I'm gonna throw a second round draft pick as a placeholder for wide receiver three, assuming they go in the second round. Uh, unless you want that to change the third round. Um, do you think that they'll cut Danny Gray? Or do you think they'll keep him? They only get I think about bring, 400K if they cut him. Yeah, they're going to bring him to camp. They're going to get, he, you know, he'll have an opportunity to compete in camp this summer. And it's just a matter of, um, you know, um, it's just a matter of, you know, does he stay healthy? Maybe he'll be the speedster that stays healthy. Maybe Tyler Harrell won't stay healthy. But I want a couple speedsters in camp who create all kinds of room, and then we'll worry about, um, you know, which of them make the roster. It's still going to be a tough roster to make for any of these speed guys. But, um, you know, that that I would definitely – I don't think Danny Gray brings you anything. Someone says bring uh, back Conley. I also would bring back Chris that, Conley. If that could. was my next question. I said, for wide, for wide receiver six or seven, the only name I could see is Chris Conley. He's about 1.5 mil. Uh, and then wide receiver seven, you know, I think they might go undrafted free agent. Maybe they go seventh round pick, sixth, sixth round pick. Um, what do you think? I mean, yeah. I mean, you're talking about, you know, guys at the very end of the draft, um, you know, I would say um, there's you know a couple names to keep your eyes on. One is Ryan Flournoy from Southeast Missouri State, runs really really well, um, and uh, he he stands out to me. Um, and I said Tyler Harrell, you know uh, Tyler Harrell would be a guy that I think would have I I definitely would have some interest in Jaquan Burton from Florida Atlantic. He's another guy, 5'10", 185 pounds, runs great. So, I, you know, Tulu Griffin from Mississippi State is a tiny little wide receiver, 5'10", 180. He's a super burner. Aeneas Smith from A&M, if he fell on day three, maybe you'd take a guy like that, smallish receiver, but he runs well. Great special teamer. Um. For the tight ends, you have you have two tight end spots. Any free agents that kind of pique your interest, or are you just going to go to the draft slash budget veterans? Uh, tight ends in the in free agency. There's a couple of interesting ones for sure. You could re-sign Charlie um, Warner. You want to re-sign Johnny Charlie Smith Warner? is available. You know, Gerald Everett's available. Um, those are pretty interesting ones to me. Uh, I'd probably go into the draft. You know, Harrison Bryant is not bad from Cleveland. He might be interesting. So, yeah, I think I would probably re-sign Charlie Warner. I mean, heck, if if you're, you know, I would love to see if I could get Michael Mayer out of Vegas. 
I just feel like they he just had a just an o- I know, but I feel like he just had kind of an okay year, and maybe his values down. I, I to me, he's he's a tremendous player. But then you know, in the draft, there's also guys in the draft you can look at a tight end. I mean, I think this is an interesting. To me, the there you know, Brock Bowers is a super blue chipper. Jatavion Sanders from Texas probably going to be a first round pick. Theo Johnson from Penn State is very athletic at 6'6", 260. Sanat from K State is a very good tight end. Um, so Dallin Holker from Colorado State, I think, is a day three guy. Um, and then there's some other interesting day three guys: Isaac Rex, um, Jack Westover, AJ Barner. But the guy that I love the most, and that I would absolutely be looking for on day three, is Mason Pline from Furman. We did a video on this kid. He's 6'7", 250. He's a power forward on the basketball team. He started his basketball career at Ferris State. And he's just a he's a he's a six eight tight end uh with basketball ability and leaping ability and athleticism. And then he's also a mechanical engineering major who's working on his masters and he's super smart and he's six eight and he's got 10 and a half inch hands. And uh, to me, Mason Pline could be a very great day three tight end steal. So that's the guy. I'm, that's the guy that I'm looking for to be my tight end two to Kittle would be Mason Pline. And then if I could bring that's back funny. Charlie Warner, I'll bring back Charlie Warner. And then you still got the Alabama kid in year two who didn't look good last year. And you got Braden Willis. So that would be my room. I'd let Dwelly go. I'd re-sign Warner. I would draft this kid Pline on day three. It's funny because uh, I indirectly am like scouting the same guys you're scouting because when I make these these short these short kind of videos, I have to go find the film and watch the film to make the videos. So I had to watch right. this guy's like high school slash college first year of college basketball highlights. And yeah, that guy could dunk. <laughs> That guy can he's like he's like Aaron Gordon or something. So yeah. I mean, if you if you can soar on the break and reverse jam, that's pretty freaking athletic. And then when you look at this kid and you're like, wait a second, he's kind of tough, and he's a mechanical engineering major, so he's super bright. You one of the reasons that I think um, Latu struggled was just that you have there's a mental grind to playing tight end in the system that makes you think a lot. And when you're thinking a lot, you're not, you're not catching the ball cleanly because you're thinking so much. I think lot two is going to be a whole lot better this year in camp. Uh, Warner's a good blocker. Kittle's Kittle. So you need one guy. And I think it's Mason Pline. I think Mason Pline could be one of the steals of the draft. All right. So I throw in Charlie, I threw in Charlie Warner and a sixth round draft pick as a placeholder. Uh, moving on to the offensive line, we'll run through it real quick. Uh, you could restructure Trent Williams; it'll create seventeen million in, uh, or it'll it'll uh, save you about what is that, fourteen million dollars on the cap. Uh, you also fill the right guard spot and the right tackle spot. I I think we could probably say for the right tackle spot, we want to go first round draft pick. Is that fair? No, I mean not for me. I mean I I'm willing to go. Um you know, second or third round draft choice. In fact, I'm, in, in almost all the mocks I've done, I'm going D line up front and I'm going O line in the, with those two picks in the third round. So, okay. I, you all know, throw. like I expect Alt, Fashanu, Fuaga, Latham, Mims, Morgan, Guyton, those seven guys, I think are all going to be off the board by the time the Niners okay. pick at 31. And then, so they're going to be looking at Sumatea from BYU, Patrick Paul from Houston, Karan Amagaji from Yale, Blake Fisher from Notre Dame. And I like all those guys, um, you know, for the most part. Paul's a little high cut. Amagaji didn't play this year, so there's some developmental there. Uh, he's also coming out of the Ivy League. Sumatea um, looks super athletic. I mean, he looks very intriguing. But to me, I like that next group. Javon Foster, Christian Jones, Ladarius Henderson, Gottlieb Ayadezi, and Garrett Greenfield. So I want, I would like, you know, I'd like if I in my world I'm going D 
defense in those first couple picks, and then I'm going O line in a row. Um, and I'm probably starting with Javon Foster, and then I'm taking Garrett Greenfield. Okay, I put a third round pick for the right tackle, uh, right guard. Do you want to resign? Uh, John I want, Feliciano? I want to, well, I want to resign John Feliciano. I'm gonna get rid of um, Bur- uh, Brendel, and um, in and and then I'm gonna go into the draft. I'm gonna sign Nick Allegretti in free agency, and and I'm gonna go in the draft, and I'm gonna draft a guard, and the guard I'm gonna draft is also from South Dakota State, Mason McCormick. So basically, I'm going to get South Dakota State's running back and their right guard and their right tackle. I really like. <laughs> I love Mason McCormick, uh, the right the right guard for South Dakota State. I mean, his workout numbers were tremendous. I've watched film on him. He's a road grader. I love the way him and Greenfield play together on that right side. Um, if I'm the Niners, I'm making. Uh, Mason McCormick, my right guard, and Garrett Greenfield, my right tackle, for like the next ten years. Is that a what 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 round is that? Fourth round. Fourth round. Fourth, Fourth round. round for the guard. All right, I'm gonna uh, go. To the- I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go offensive line with Foster, offensive line with Greenfield, and offensive line with McCormick, all in a row. Okay. Um go to the defense you uh you cut eric armstead are you keeping him are you trading him well there's no trading him um (laughs) you only save 22 million or you don't save you don't save 22 million you only save six million i'm keeping him i'm keeping him you have four empty dn spots or four empty defensive line spots two dn two d tackle you said that you wanted to go defensive end right to start the draft off um or tackle tackle. so i to me i mean like like the niners pick at 31 and they pick in the 60s all right um at 31 i don't really like the options so i'm not i mean jonah ellis it might be a little too early for jonah ellis and he's a little on the small side I love Muhammad Kamara from Colorado State. I want him. I like Austin Booker from Kansas. I like some of these guys on day three. Javon Solomon, uh, Jalex Hunt from Houston Christian, uh, Braden McGregor from Michigan, um, and guy, for guys even further down the line, Sundiata Anderson from Grambling. Um, there's there's some guys I like that are that are you know D- Richard Jubinor from Troy. But um, I think I'm going in, in the first round. I'm going to go with the with the big boys up front. So I'm going to go with like um, Rook Aurora 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 from Clemson in round one. He's six four two ninety five. He's smart. He's working on his masters. He's athletic as hell. Um, he's two hundred ninety five pounds and fast. Uh, I love the film of Aurora Row. So I'm going him uh, right away. And then I'm coming back with my next pick, and I'm probably going big D lineman again. Either Braden Fisk from Florida State, Mason Smith from LSU, um, you know, possibly um, who else? Let me see some of the uh, the other guys. I like I love Darius Robinson from Missouri. Michael Hall from Ohio State. Um, you know, really, really like those guys. So I'm going to see if I can get two. I would like to see if I can add two good defensive linemen up front out of, out of the guys I've just named. And in my ideal world, it would be like probably Aurora Rowe and Michael Hall Jr., something like that. So I'm going to select. We have a second round pick selected for the wide receiver three. Unless you want to move that back, I could do a third round pick for a defensive tackle or defensive end. Uh, um, would you rather go second round defensive defensive line again, or would you rather go wide receiver second round? Hmm. I mean, I really love Jonah Ellis. I would take him in round two. 
He's just a crazy edge rusher from Utah. But I'd probably go wide receiver. I'd probably go wide receiver because there's some D linemen I like later too. All right, I can do a third rounder. There's also obviously there's Chase Young you can bring back. There's Randy Gregory. There's Clellan Farrell. There's other you know Jonathan Greenard. You could sign Jonathan Greenard, Bryce Huff. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to sign a top tier D lineman, either an edge or a, a tackle. And but I mean this is the position that has to be addressed multiple times. I mean, I, even if I go free agency, I'm going, I'm going D line in the draft, you know, I mean, yeah. you got to get D linemen. I think you mean, uh, you have six, you have six D linemen that are free agents that all potentially could walk away. Do you want to go after Jonathan Greenard? Cause I can put him down. It's your, yeah, uh, it's your yeah absolutely. Go. Greenard, Greenard would be great. You didn't get Wilkins, right? No. Yeah, go for Greeners. Okay. Greener would be a great, yep, great, great edge. 15 rusher. million. It's 15 million. Uh, and then I'll just select um, will they bring back Clint Farrell? Yes, no, or you want to say no. Uh, no. Chase Young? Chase Young, yes. Okay. okay. Chase Young, Chase yes, Young everybody for 15 else. 15 million? Are they going to bring him back for 15 million? Is that really what they're going to uh, do? I don't know about that. Might be closer to 12. His going rate's 15. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, that's what they're saying on here. 15 million for Chase Young. It's a little pricey. It's a little pricey. It's a little pricey. That's a little pricey. We could go back and change that later. Um, Yeah, last last spots here. Let's run quick. Uh, You have two linebacker spots. You could go, you know, you could go Aziz Al Shire. I'm definitely going Aziz Al Shire. Okay. Definitely going to Ziza Shair. And then I'm probably going day three of the draft for a linebacker as well. And there's a couple that I really like. Darius Muasau from UCLA. Love him. Nathaniel Watson from Mississippi State. Love him. Tyrese Knight, who had the best 10 yard split of anybody. Love him. Um, Cedric Gray would be fantastic, but that's probably unrealistic. And, um, Peyton Wilson is another guy. I mean, my God, if Peyton Wilson's on the board in the first round, I don't know if I could pass him. The NC State guy, NC State yeah. linebacker. Who was yeah, the Buckus good. Award winner. Um, on day three, though, there's some really good linebackers that I really like. I love Kalen Deloach for Florida State, who's not really a linebacker. He's kind of a safety slash linebacker. But to me, Deloach is a star. I think and I think they, what you got to do here too is you got to restructure Fred Warner. You save ten million. Yeah, I'd restructure Fred, but you probably haven't. They already done that once, or no? Uh, I'm not sure, but it saves ten against the cap if you do. I definitely would like to bring Greenlaw back on some kind of injury designation, but um, I don't think he's going to be on the roster. And Aziz would be a big add, and if I can get Aziz, then I don't have to worry about drafting a linebacker until day three. But even if even if I got Aziz, I'd love to have Kalen Deloach from Florida State. He's just um, awesome. Eh? Watch his film. His film is crazy. Would you want to extend Trevarius Ward? You save $8 million if you do so. You extend. Yeah, I would. I absolutely would, and I think they will. Okay. You don't want to cut Ambry. That doesn't really do much for you. Um, you have two. You have a nickel, bo- a nickel back spot and a CB7. Um, so you could go, you know, Kenny Moore if you wanted to sign him. Uh, you could go budget veteran. You could do draft. You could do undrafted free agent. I don't know what you what you want to want to do there for the, the last cornerback spots on the roster. I mean, Max Melton is my favorite corner in the draft. He's probably going to go late first or early second, so that probably takes him off the board for the 49ers. If I can find corners on day three, I'm going that direction. I love Renardo Green from Florida State, um, Kamal Haddon from Tennessee, Chow Smith, Wade, Wazoo, uh, Quantez Stiggers, who played in the Canadian League this year for the Toronto Argonauts. Stiggers is real. Love him. Um, And um, Willie Drew from Virginia State. Very underrated cornerback. That's going to be a day three corner. 
uh, Storm Duck from Louisville, underrated corner. Carlton Johnson from Fresno, underrated corner. So there's some underrated cornerbacks that I'd be interested in late, but uh, my favorite day three corner, uh, probably Renardo Green and uh, Willie Drew. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fourth round draft pick because we haven't used that one, the second fourth round draft pick. I'm going to go undrafted free agent because there's always a chance they could go undrafted free agent, right? For the last oh, yeah. spot. I mean, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, uh, they could go last free agent. Last two here, uh, just the safety four and safety five spot. Uh, you could go Chauncey Gardner Johnson. You could go Sean Gibson. You could go another budget veteran, or you could go draft pick. I'm trying to remember. I'm going draft pick. I mean, there's a bunch of guys I really like here. Um, I'll give you a couple of them. I love um, PJ Jules, Southern Illinois, uh, Marcellus Dial, South Carolina. And um, Kenny Logan from Kansas. Uh, Jalon Carleys from Missouri. Uh, Josh Proctor from Ohio State. My favorite of the group is probably Malik Mustafa from Wake. Um, but there's some, I there's think, some good I ones. Think, Adrian I, Taylor Demerson for Texas Tech. Super good player. I think, I think you might be better off doing a fifth-round safety and doing an undrafted fourth running back what do you think just because of the picks okay yeah yeah I feel like that might give be me malik more mustafa malik then mustafa I'd probably, then i'd probably take gore's then, kid as an undrafted i don't think gore's yeah. kid i think frank's kid's gonna go either seventh round or undrafted uh and then i'm gonna do um you can either sign someone or you don't have any picks left this is your last this is your last play here you go what Chauncey Gardner Johnson, or you go budget for, budget veteran. Probably would make the most sense. For what? For the last safety spot, I don't, I don't think you have any picks left. So, oh, uh, the last safety spot. Let's see. Let's see here. Let me check the uh, check the free agent board. Who's the who's an underrated safety? Who they could get late. Well, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, but he's not underrated, and he's going to go high. Um, Darnell Savage is a hell of a player, but he'll be gone. He's going to go high. Um, anybody down the list? It's kind of interesting. Um, well, one that makes sense is if you know maybe Jalen Hawkins, who went to Cal, who played for Brandon Staley with the Chargers. I could see him being a free agent they sign and Jalen Hawkins is, you know, 20 Taylor Hawkins. And... They could, they could promote someone from the practice squad. Yeah. Or Taylor Hawkins. But I mean, as if you're going for a free agent, I could see, yeah. I, could I see put a budget better on one mil, a 1 million spot, uh, spot. So that's, that's the list there. So we, we are 15 million over the cap. What we could do is restructure Trent Williams. And if they do that, then you're only you're less than a million over the cap. So you could just these numbers are all arbitrary. So that basically is is even with the cap. Um, so just to run run through the list, you have Brock Purdy, Zach Wilson, and or Mac Mac Jones at quarterback two, uh, Brandon Allen at quarterback three. You're going Chris McCaffrey on a restructured deal. Elijah Mitchell, you're cutting Kyle Huszczyk. You're keeping Jordan Mason. You're going an undrafted free agent, maybe Frank Gore Jr. at running back four. Uh, you're keeping Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, you're, but you're letting Jawan Jennings walk. You're taking a second-round wide receiver. Uh, as Xavier Leggett comes to mind, if Brian Thomas Jr. falls that far, that would be amazing. Uh, you have Ronnie Bell, Danny Gray. You're re-signing... Uh, Chris Conley, and you're taking a seventh round pick on your seventh receiver. Uh, in the tight end room, you're going George Kittle, Braden Willis. You're keeping Charlie Warner, um, and you're going a sixth round draft pick on a tight end. Maybe that's Mason Pline, the, the, the dunker in the dunker spot. Um, and you're going Cam Latu as, as uh, tight end five. Uh, offensive line got a little tricky because you wanted to cut Jake Brendel, but I don't have that option. So we can go restructure Trent Williams, Aaron Banks. Maybe you you cut Brendel for someone who makes a similar amount of money. 
Then you go John Feliciano, right guard, third round draft pick at right tackle, uh, fourth round pick for the offensive line and a budget veteran signing. Uh, also, you keep Spencer Burford, Jalen Moore, Nick Sakal, Colt McKivitz. Defensively, so that means, well, that means wait, do I have Javon Foster and uh, Garrett Greenfield and Mary Mason McCormick? Uh, you have That's what I want. You have two. You have two. You have two. You have two drafted offensive linemen. Okay. Um, Way, Whale want. and Wasp is Larry. Don't forget my dude Frank Crum from Wyoming. Yeah, Frank Crum's good, but I'll tell you if you can get if you can get Garrett Greenfield and Mason McCormick and Javon Foster, I think you're fine. I think, I think that this, would be the defensive line is where they definitely take the biggest upgrade. You're keeping Eric Armstead, you have Nick Bosa, Javon Hargrave, Kalia Davis, Drake Jackson, Robert Beal. You're signing Jonathan Greenard. You're re-signing Chase Young. You take a first round pick on uh, you know, a Jonah Ellis or what would you want? A defensive tackle or uh someone. Ruka Royal Roro, and then a third round pick on whoever you can get, uh, Michael Hall round. or something. So that's that's a that's 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 four players that are pretty good going to the defensive line. Jonathan Greener, Chase Young, a first and a third. Um, and then in the, th the linebacker room, you're restructuring Fred, and you're going Aziz Al Shair in a seventh round pick. So then you have Aziz Al Shair is kind of like your your Green Law. Your guy to replace Greenlaw when Greenlaw's out and recovering. Um, and then you're extending Traverius Ward. You're taking a fourth round pick, an undrafted free agent. And then in the safeties, you're going fifth round pick and a budget veteran. It's pretty good. I, I actually like that a lot. I mean, a lot of these guys, you're saying budget veterans and this and that. I mean, I've got particular names in, in mind, and it's like, you know, it doesn't sound as good when you say budget veteran. I mean, if 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 they get the guys that I like, then then they're good. Budget veteran could be a disaster. Budget veteran could be an awesome pick. So, you know, right there you go. Anyways, well, yeah, that was, going, uh, basically basically I'm going D line over O line at the top of the draft, um, and I'm going um, I'm signing a guard, a veteran guard, but then I'm drafting. I'm I'm drafting multiple offensive linemen that I like in the mid rounds, um, and to me, if they could get Garrett Greenfield, Javon Foster, and Mason McCormick, I don't need a Marius Mims. You know, I, I I think you can get by. Really, I think Foster could be the replacement for Trent. I think Greenfield could be the starter at right tackle for the next decade. Um, you know, and you're getting these guys in the mid rounds, which is hard to do. So, I mean, there's some success in this. And then the other one is um, the quarterback. You know, it's like, do you go with Sam Darnold? I mean, Greg Papa loves Sam Darnold. He wants him back. Uh, I, I don't. I'm just like, yeah, you know what? He's just good enough to get you beat. I'd rather, I'd rather go with Brandon Allen and see if you can do better than Sam Darnold. Yeah, I don't think the Niners would have won with Sam Darnold. That's the thing. Where I think if they had Mac Jones um, – I think they have a chance to potentially win win games with Mac Jones. I don't think they would have won with Darnold. I, I don't see. I I wouldn't see the Niners signing Chase Young to the same deal they signed Jonathan Green or two. That's that's where I think this list might be wrong. I don't I don't think fifteen million. Did Chase Young produce a fifteen million dollar season last season? I don't think so. No. So if you resign no. him, it'd be like a ten. I think you try to go for like a ten million. $11 million deal. The talk is one year prove it deal. That's not 15 million. Come on. That's not yeah. 15 million. And, and if you have an extra 5 million, then you can actually go after a, a real, you know, safety or, or corner that, uh, you know, you could go after a, after a Kenny Moore. You know, I actually, I really like Kenny Moore. It's funny that you said that. I like Kenny Moore a lot. Um, but yeah, let's, I mean, Kenny, uh, Kenny Moore, play, Kenny Moore plays one of the most important positions in the entire defense, which is that slot corner. So, man, if you can get one of the NFL's best slot corners to go with what you have, I mean, that should make you quite a bit better. Yeah. Um, are you, are you ready to take some calls or do you want to do, let's uh, do it. just thank our sponsors and then go to calls. Yeah, let's thank our sponsors, uh, Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week. Uh, go say hi to Damon and Mary and get some brisket. 
MarinAutoGlass.com, 415-883-3030. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check the link in the description. Use the promo code KRUG, and they will match you up to your first $100. And then Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles, 205 Cypress Avenue in Pacific Grove. Call Anthony Catania. He's at 831-521-5264. Thanks to our sponsors for being sponsors of the Krug Show, which as of today has 40,000 subs. So what's going on, Kev? We're, we're, go ahead. You pick the callers. What order? And let's do it. PDX. How's it going? We'll go, you... we'll go caller in the middle. We'll go caller in the middle today. Hey, I, didn't, I was I was kind of worried I'd be the first one, so I prepared for it. <laughs> so, don't want to be taken by surprise. <laughs> You're in uh, Washington, right? Or Seattle? Or uh, No, uh, I'm near Portland, Portland Oregon. I, I'm in Washington, but it's it's just easier to say Portland. What's up, brother? How you? How's your night going? It's good. Got been with school today. Now here to talk about free agency. I love. Like I almost like free agency in the draft more than the regular season a lot of times. <laughs> Just like thinking about how to build a team. Nice. So what? Do you have, a, give do you strong, have a name or a... opinions? Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, I mean, I the main thing is move off of Debo. I think it, I think it's time. Wow. I, I think that the dead cap charge is already built into his cap hit, so you're paying it either way. Get the pick, save a little money, and I would like to get somebody. Yeah, Debo's fast, but I'd like to get somebody with like truly game breaking speed for those end of rounds, kind of like what uh, the Dolphins do with Tyreek Hill. They're saying uh, Mac- was Malachi Mc- McCorley is uh, he's a wide receiver prospect. Yeah, Malachi Corley, they're saying, and he's like the Debo clone. And I haven't watched a ton of film on him, but, you know, that's, that's I want, a, that's I want more speed than that. I want, I want like, 4-3 speed around the edge that you're just not going to catch. There's just no way. Once it's gone, it's gone. And then beating you know, him over it, the top. It's an interesting deal because, um, you know, Kyle loves Debo. And there's no question that Debo's kind of one of their tone setters. And I just feel like everybody's a little bit anti Debo because we saw him at the end of the year when he was hurt. Um, this guy didn't, you know, he left the Green Bay game because of injury. The shoulder was clearly messed up. I don't know. Um, I hear what you're saying, though. I mean, he doesn't run the great routes. He's not a separator. Uh, it seems like now that you have McCaffrey, you're not using him from scrimmage as a runner. So... You know, what do you got? At the end of the day, you got a guy who's walks in with Trent Williams with the boom box, can make a couple of nice plays around the line of scrimmage, but is not a difference maker at the catch point, not a vertical threat, not a guy that you use a lot as a runner. Seems like he's having a hard time staying healthy. He's had two kind of just okay seasons. So I, I, I hear you. I hear you. It's a, Debo is like, it's going to be one of those with the day they move him. There's going to be a lot of people going, what? Uh, but I can understand the argument. Let's just say that. Well, and I, I think his contract's not tradable for the 49ers, but I, I do think it's appealing to another team where, where maybe you can get a, maybe a little bit better pick than most people are thinking. I think you could probably get a second because the Niners would be eating most of that cap hit and then some wide receiver team that's needy, a $6 million for Debo, you know, what are you willing to give up for a good chief receiver, you know, depending on how they feel about him and his injuries. There's so many receivers. You know, I've, I've watched so many of these receivers that look really, really good. Now, rookie receivers often don't do much. And, you know, uh, who are you moving him to? I mean, are you trading him to the Chiefs? I don't know if I like that. Uh, but, you know, or you get if you could get back Lucharius Sneed, maybe I do like that. So, I don't know. It's I Personally, it's a tough one. Um, I'd like to see them keep Debo, but something tells me between Debo, Ayuk, and JJ, somebody's not coming back. Yeah, I mean... I, it's, I don't know. I really like Juwan Jennings. He's he's been clutch. So, and he's yeah. young still. And I I don't know. Like when 
when you're talking about what Purdy needs, like if you were to tell me the number one type of receiver he needs right now to to beat you know man coverage and some of the stuff that he struggled with, it's a big bodied guy. I mean, like I want speed because I like speed because you can't coach speed. But if you got somebody who was six four and above, you know, two hundred and twenty pounds, I could really box a corner out and beat you know you know beat a corner in man coverage. That's what that's what I would want. I mean, I like Xavier Leggett because he's just so freaking explosive, but you kind of described Rice's kid, and Rice's kid has got a relationship with uh, Purdy and has caught passes from Purdy. So, you know, and he's 6'4", uh, good-sized receiver. You know, I, I like I, – I'll say this. I really like Jerry's kid, and it's not just because of Jerry. I think his, his, his ball skills, his catch radius, his attention to detail, his veteran – route running. I think there's some high level traits there. Yep. Yeah. I like him too. The the other thing would be like, I want them to get Dallas's center. If they're going to spin big, spin big on a cheaper position. And outside of that, I'd rather have them just spend, uh, like get high quality backups across the board rather than go out and get one big guy. I mean, just try, try to find a lot of value everywhere rather than, uh, a big well, contract, I mean, you know, that's worth it. Don't you think it, they maybe. already have backup O linemen? I mean, they have Jalen Moore, Nick Sakel, Spencer Burford, John Feliciano. You know, a lot of people would say those Ben Barch, Colton McKivitz, maybe that is your backup offensive line. Uh, you know, maybe, it, you no, know, I, I, mean, I maybe, agree with you there. I, I, I was thinking more of like their, their defensive players more than anything go out and just find, find value rather than, than shoot for the stars. But I agree uh, with I you hear. on on offensive line where they, they kind of have the backup line already in place. Kind of do it with numbers. You're thinking more, you know, kill it with numbers as opposed to, you know, getting the star. I think that makes sense. Especially yeah, on the I, defensive line. Yeah. And I like X, I mean, like we don't, nobody really knows, but I like Robert Beal. I mean, if you're to tell me the one person that is super similar to D Ford, it'd be him. I mean, they're so similar. Why? Cause the question they both are injured? is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Robert Robert Beal's 6'4", 250. Uh, you know, D. Ford was more like 6'2", but the speed off the edge. I mean, D. Ford had just unbelievable get-off. Beal's got great sub-4-5 speed. Um, I think Beal's going to get better, but it's, you know, it's, you know, how many risks do you want to take projecting young D linemen on this front? I mean, you got to get it done up front. That That's where this defense either... That's where this defense eats. So you got to make sure that if you're going with the young guys, that you think those young guys can can do it. That's true, but I mean, eventually you're gonna. I mean, you're you're always rolling the dice, right? Whether it's a free agent that you pay that doesn't pay off, a draft pick, you know, choosing somebody on your roster, it's always a little bit of a gamble. No question. No question. I mean, all of this, all of this is a projection on health, and you know. Uh, are they going to fit in? And, you know, it's like, and some do and some don't. And then some guys improve a lot from year one to year two, and other guys just kind of drift away. So I'll say this, Beal, at the end of the year, you know, he was, I talked to him in the locker room after the playoff, the first playoff game, and he's like, hey, you know, um, you know, I feel like I'm coming on. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've, I've learned a ton. I expect him to show up in camp next year and look like a monster. Hey, well, just let it be known. I said it here first. Robert Bill is coming. All right. Thanks for talking. Thanks, thanks, man. Appreciate you, PDX. PDX nice Niner. PDX. Appreciate you. Should we go to Alan and one then Big our, Mo? One of our usual call. Yeah. Let's go to Alan. Oh, you do it. Alan. Alan. How's Coles? I wonder if I hear uh, Alan. Hey, there he is. is. How you doing? What's going on, man? How are you? How's Coles? Doing good. In the trailer. Now, doing where well. are you? I, I don't you. see the. I don't see the uh, the rooftop. I'm seeing. He's in the trailer seeing. unloading today. Oh, you're on yes, the trailer. Sir. And you're working yeah, up I'm a sweat. Living. Um, I wanted to ask you because Grant had a good point on something earlier tonight with uh, Jesse. I feel like if 
we're going to make it a leap this year. We need to give Brock more control of the offense. Let him, like, you know, call his own audibles and stuff. If, if, you know, he, he, he likes to let a certain coverage with the IU or something. Is the assumption made by them that he's not in control of the offense? That's what I was going to say. You no, know, it's like, uh, you know, like Kyle telling where to, where Brock, to tell Brock where the ball needs to go and stuff. Stuff like that. Like, like Kyle give him more a leash in the offense than normal. My understanding was that Brock was already kind of checking in and out of plays on the line of scrimmage. And like there was there, I remember there was some specific examples of that in the playoffs where he was like, can, can, can. And they, and they switched the plays. I, I can't remember exactly the play, but I specifically remember making a video about it. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. Is there examples of, of, of Purdy being, I think, I think he, they're discussing off the Super Bowl when, uh, you on the left side, you know, for the like the first second read, say Kyle telling you what where the first and second read should be. Let uh, Brock decide that. I mean, uh, you know what? I you know I I kind of think that premise is wrong. I really do. I don't I don't think that I don't think Kyle is telling him that where he's got to go on his second read. I think he can talk to him about what he thinks where he thinks he should go. Um, but they're, they're I think Brock's the, making the decision. The Brock, Kyle. Where what? Where did Kyle say? Uh, the mic'd up. I'm talking about, I think on that uh, Jawan Jennings play that uh, he was yelling at Brock to hit McCaffrey out the backfield. I think that's what they were discussing. And get him where Brock pretty uh, a free lane. Well, it sounds like those guys are, have decided that Kyle's a problem and that Brock is not a problem, and so they want to give more control to Brock. But I don't view Kyle as a problem. I don't think Brock views Kyle as a problem. Um, so we'll just have to kind of see how it all shakes out. But, um, you know, I think the quarterback has latitude to read the read the coverage as he sees it. And every play is going to have your – first, second, and third progression, and that could change, or that could stay the same based on the coverage. Um, and I think, you know, Kyle's always going to have that connection verbally um, to uh, to the quarterback on the headsets, and I think Brock's always going to have the ability to kind of do what he wants to do. What are you, lo- what are you loading right now? Uh, just unload- I'm unloading a trailer full of boxes. That, that came through. Empty boxes or boxes of, of what? Probably most likely clothing. It ah, seems yeah. like you're bending over and picking up. Uh, is is that the best? Is that the? Is that really so, the best way you know, that we some, have? There's some, there's, some, there's some that dropped on the floor, so I'm just picking those up right quick. Okay. Um, I wanted to. How do you learn, how do you what, feel what, at the end of your shift? Do you feel are you sore or are you? Uh, are you you know? Are you you know what? It, have you do you know yeah, your body? Does your body know he's been through a work day, or do you feel great? At the it, it, it does, but I feel more brain dead than like sore than anything. I feel more brain dead after the end of the shift. Feel brain dead? You yeah, mean, like, you have to do a lot of mental grind. What what's mentally it, challenging about what you're doing? Well, not not like today. I'm talking about like on usual occasions. So I have to like pay attention to certain the detail and stuff like that. So like, it's kind of like through. Kevin. It's like Kevin in class. You know, Kevin Basically. sometimes he's got to pay attention to the teacher. He thinks he knows, but he's hey, got to pay I, attention. I'll give That's props to Alan. Doing okay. anything, if I had to do that in the middle of the night, I my, I would be mentally tired too. I, I think I'd Dusty Gold. Dusty Gold says, um, "Can Larry do your job? Can I? Could I do that job?" I think anybody could do this job. The question really? is the biggest. Yeah, the biggest. I, I tell all my friends that I try to put them on this job. It gets boring every now and then. You know, like, you, you ever get that, Larry, where you, you work the job, come in, do the same thing over and over and over again, you just get bored? Yeah. No, I do. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I haven't done a job like that in a long time. But, yeah, I mean, I you know, I've done jobs where I'm like, oh, dude. I used to fill up Coke machines and, like, candy machines when I was in high school. And, you know, just stacking those Cokes 
one after another, cutting my fingers on all the metal and all that stuff. Man, at the end of the day, I'd just be like, man, wow, it's killing me. <laughs> Oh, I want to hear your I want to hear your NFL comparisons for uh, the, the receiver from South Carolina. Look at who do I who yes. do I think he's like? I think he's like AJ Brown. I think he's more of DK than AJ Brown. He, he, okay. he's back and watch, those are those were of, college teammates. So. Yeah, they uh they go back to like DK's uh the year he was coming out with AJ Brown and stuff uh, that. DK looks he wasn't like his his tape wasn't all, all that like outstanding. But he has parts of his game where he probably could you know be the physical receiver we're probably needing because I feel like we need a physical receiver. One thing about DK is DK can only run go patterns. This guy can this guy's this guy I think is is you know he's a more complete player. He's a more complete guy across the board. Now, he's an I academic agree. honor roll player. Uh, there's a little bit of Debo in this kid's game. There's a little bit of eight. To me, he's a cross between Debo and AJ Brown. AJ Brown. He can, yeah. he can run the, Debo's the short physicality with AJ Brown height. Yeah, he. <laughs> I mean, and AJ Brown is two twenty two. Man, he's super physical. Um, but this guy, I think, is a little bit more explosive than those guys. A little bit more explosive, and this guy runs in the four threes. I've seen um, at 227 pounds. Yeah, and this guy was academic honor roll, so he's got a real inte- intellect to his game. Um, and you can kind of see that in his route running ability. I think Leggett is really special, to be honest. And I, I do have a, a, a question for you. So, like, you know how the draft goes. Any, everything's unexpected. Um, if, the, if Brock Bauer somehow, some way, came all the way down to 30, 31, would you go get the right tackle that you need, or would you go get Brock Bowers? If Brock Bowers falls to thirty-one, I'm taking Brock Bowers. That's yeah, that's a that's a hell of a fall. I mean, Brock I Bowers see, is a I blue see. chipper. He he's a blue chip tight end. He's a movement tight end um, who's somewhere between two thirty and two fifty, and I just think he's such a difference maker. Um, this guy. This guy is more along the lines of the tr- Detroit's tight end um, uh, than Kittle. I, I think, yeah, he's more like a Laporta. More of a receiver. I think Bowers is a really end. special. He has he has hands. He has incredible hands, and he can scrap in the run game. I've seen clips of him scrapping in the run game. So he's just he's one of the better. I think just over. Who was the tight end prospect? Safer. He's one of the draft. safest. Day. Who was the tight end prospect um, of this? That, Falcons drafted. Uh, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts. He was – Kyle Pitts, you know, he was like the the tight end. He was like probably the last great tight end prospect, but he was always not really – he was like – he was I, I see him more as a receiver than, yeah, than yeah. tight end. So he kind of was a tweener. Where like Brock Bowers, I think, can actually play the traditional tight end role and just have great hands. And Although, I think – you can also, you can also, um, you know, you can flex him out. I mean, I think he's a, he's a, he's a awesome receiver. I mean, he might be one of the best receiving tight ends we've seen come out in the last decade. Yeah. I, agree. I love Brock Bowers. <laughs> All right, Larry, I'm gonna let you go, man. Uh, y'all have a great rest of your night. And Alan from Coles, everybody. <laughs> Alan, have a great one in Indianapolis. We'll talk to you next week, brother. You too, man. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Alan. There you go. Somebody said they were getting vertigo watching Alan reach down and pick up those boxes. Right. Alan's I was working hard thinking, tonight. I was just thinking, you know, it's 2024. How how do we not have a better system than just backbreaking, bending over, picking it up, bending over, picking it like we don't have a robot for that. Like, come on. We're just what are you making, trying to say? Making... You're saying that Alan, you're trying to replace Alan's job with a robot? No, I'm saying Alan needs to be, you know, he needs to be like managing the robot. You know, he doesn't, he shouldn't be doing the work. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have him running the crew show and you should be in the, at Coles. What, what a switch up. If I call you, and I'm taking his job. <laughs> and he's sitting in my chair. He's sitting I'm here. Saying, hey, you know what? I just did an incredible mo- big Moe's. He's taking him to a steakhouse in, in Vegas. 
Big Mo. <laughs> Big Mo. What's up, Big Mo? What's up, fellas? Man, you guys got me dying over here, bro. Alan from Coles got me about to puke, bro. I swear to God, bro, that vertigo. <laughs> I was just like, I'm looking at the screen like, what's up? What's <laughs> up, Alan? <laughs> How you guys doing tonight, guys? Good, man. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. You know what I mean? Just, uh, you know, glad to be here as always. Glad to see you guys as usual. You know what I mean? Glad to talk about the Niners and uh, what we're about to do. So, you know, always blessed. Always blessed. Yep. It's a good day. As uh, as uh, Ice Cube once sang, it's a good day. It was. It was a good day. Every day is a good day. You wake up, it's a good day. It's all. Kev didn't have to use his AK, um, so I'd say it's a good day. <laughs> Hey, what's up with Kev, though? Uh, got the hat on tonight. Hiding the trademark curls, man. What's cracking, yeah. lacking with that, bro? Yeah, what's up with that? What's up, what's that? up with that, man? The day before his birthday, he's trying to hide the hair. No, I know. Oh. People were like, Kev, Kev got a Kev haircut. I didn't get a haircut. So, I just tomorrow's your birthday? On. Kev's yes, going to turn 18 tomorrow. Dude, listen. No, hey. 22. Hey, you, better, 22. you better not be turning 18 tomorrow, bro, after all that debauchery was doing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There was no debauchery. There was no debauchery. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That's right. No, but That's seriously, right. though, if your birthday is tomorrow, man, happy birthday to you. Let me just say that. Thank you, thank Dude, you. my girlfriend's birthday is tomorrow, too. So we, that's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Should I embarrass should, Big Mo? Should I embarrass Kev with a photo? I've, you bro, know, what do you mean, man? What you mean? Why are you asking, man? You better run that, bro. You I, come on, bro. We all boys up in here. Let's run that. Let's run that. Let's see if I can find an embarrassing photo of Kev oh, from God. from way, way, way back from the way back machine. And I, you know, as a dad, you know, I've got. Well, I've got. This is one of my favorite ones. Let me see if I can if I can show this one. Uh. Where's the football one? He, there's there's one in his football jersey. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There we go. Oh, what? <laughs> I look insane in that. I look insane in that. And it's, <laughs> it's a little too bright, huh? Let me turn down the. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Oh man, that's awesome. No, I can't do it. That's not gonna work. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It was a baby picture. Um, but yeah, we we've we've. I'm sure I could go. Uh, I've got Kev here in the football uniform too. Oh, here we go. I no one can see your phone, so. Yeah, we can't see that one too good. We can't see that one too good. Uh, that, was not, that was not too good. All right. I guess we're not going to be able to uh, show too many of the uh, the Kev pictures. Um, Kev's like, thank I'm goodness. Gonna... Thank goodness. <laughs> Here we go. We, we can probably see this one. You got to get closer. Oh, there you go. There you go. That was junior year when I did not play very much. <laughs> hey, high you, school, still look, you still high look sharp football. in that uniform, though. You still look sharp in that uniform. <laughs> cornerback, cornerback. I got some speed. I got some wheels. That's right. He played. He played corner and wide receiver. Hey, let's go. At least you got hands, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why I played a lot of a lot more corner. Uh oh. Uh oh, living that stereotype. <laughs> I was always nervous. I was always nervous watching him play football. You know what I mean? It's like I watched him play baseball and I would root for him, but I wasn't as nervous. When I when you watch him play football, you're like, oh man. Nervous. Well, yeah, you know, because anytime you can get crushed, you know what I mean? It's part of the you game, get, you know. Exactly. You can get crushed. And it's hard, it's hard to watch your kid get crushed. Oh, you really want to know is. a funny story? I, I don't tell a lot of stories on this, but this one's just an all-time story, so I have to tell it. We got in a huge argument because I wanted to play football and you wouldn't let me. And we were just like, you know what? Fine. Like, let's just go out to a game. Let's just see. Let's just like you and me. Let's go out to a game. We go We go to this uh, It's an away team. We're, we're driving like 20 minutes away. We watch a game. We sit down. It's just me and my dad just watching the game. And then, boom, one of my friends gets hit. He's like, can't move. Ambulance comes on the field, like all this stuff. And you're like, yep, you're not playing. And I was like, 
<laughs> just the craziest. Yeah, a like, kid had to be a kid had to be like attached to a cart and like carted off. An ambulance came on the field. They stopped the game. The kid wasn't moving. I mean, and this was like the game we were going to decide if Kev was going to play or not. Ooh, that's <laughs> rough. That's was rough. That, was, that, was that freshman year or sophomore year? That was, that was sophomore, sophomore year. year. So yeah. basically, Kev stopped talking to me. And then at that point, Big Mo, I said, you know what? I can't, I can't, you know, I can't have this kid not talking to me. Um, so I let him play. I let him play. I didn't let him play freshman year because I said to him, why do you want to play? And I think he said something about girls. And I'm like, no, no, no. You don't play football for girls. I go, you got to lift weights for a year. If you want to lift weights and get stronger, and bigger, faster, um, and maybe next year you can play. And so he did. He got bigger, stronger, faster, um, worked out quite a bit. And then I said, you know what? Why not? So there you go. That's the story. Uh, my second son plays baseball, but not football. Uh, and now my third son's going to be a freshman next year. He wants to play football. So now I'm probably going to have to let him. But I need to get him stronger, too. Otherwise, I don't want him to play either. So, yeah, I, somebody said... Uh, whale and wasp is Larry caved in. Yeah, I did. I caved. I caved. Well, you know what the deal with football is, man. Is like, dude, once you take that first hit, bro, you know if you want to play football or not. After that, it's going. It's this. Once you get that first good hit, man, it's going to man you up or not. You know what I mean? This either you're going to stay on the field and keep going, or you're going to be like, I'm out. <laughs> exactly, and it's like you know, you uh, if you want to play football, that's fine, but you know, the one thing my dad never let me do and i would never let my kids do is you can't join the team and then quit yeah you can quit at the end of the year but you can't join the team and quit so if you join the team you're going to stick with it for the whole season yeah you better stick with it that's for real for real you know what unfortunately like nowadays man this younger generation they 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 ain't got that ethic like like us old school guys, you know what I mean? But hey, that's a whole nother topic. We're not gonna get into that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's a topic for another show. <laughs> so Big Mo, what's your vibe, man? We're we've now gone from the frustration of losing the Super Bowl to we're on the verge of free agency, and then the draft follows. Is there some some player you want uh, in free agency this year? For the Niners to go get. Um, as far as for free agency, I'm not really sure about the free agency stuff, though. I was feeling you on the D lineman. Oh, ro -ro 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 -ro. you know what I mean? Yes. I was feeling that too. Yeah, yeah. He's big. He's athletic. He got the uh, moves. He's fast. I think he ran like a, a low five, uh, 40 yard dash, like a five, two or five, three, 40 or some stuff like that. Like that dude would be nice if we could get him. That's who I like. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what Aurora I think. Aurora Rowe is very, very special player. Um, very special player. I mean, he's a he's a true monster, and he's smart. He's smart. He was their leader. He was all conference in a good conference. Um, when you watched him at Indy, he was phenomenal in the drills. And then when you watch his film, his film is great. You read his bio, and you're like, wow, this kid's really amazing. So. Um, I love him. I think he's a, I think he's a tremendous player. Um, and I, if they can get him, they ought to get him. Um, so he, he, you know, the guy is a two time ACC honor roll selection. He's working on his master's degree. His, his family, I think came from Lagos. I'd have to look that up, but I believe, and he's just, he's an incredible shape. I mean, this guy's absolutely amazing. And when you watched him playing for Clemson, man, he just was everywhere. Yeah, that dude was a specimen for sure. He's definitely yeah. a specimen. Yeah. Okay, so guess what, man? You know, I got something spicy for you. You know, I, you thought the, I thought the 49ers was just in the football business. You know what? The 49ers are now in the business of holding hands and kicking cans, baby. That's what the 49ers are in the business of now. You know what I mean? It's like, what are we doing, man? It's like, look, okay, let's start with the coaches. Too many chefs ruined the broth. Come on, guys. You, you don't like the DC you don't, you don't, Yeah. I don't like Brandon Staley having to babysit. You know what I'm saying? I think we should just stick with what? Sorensen, we should have just stuck with him if we believe in him. 
You know what I'm saying? And then just let it ride. You know what I mean? Why we got to have Brandon Staley coming in, holding his hand, and then next thing you know, now it can be misconstrued as, oh, who's the coach? Who's really in charge? Now you got that tension in the room. It's like I, I'm not really feeling that aspect of it. You know what I mean? And then as far as for a defensive coordinator, like to me, I don't really feel that Brandon Staley's a proven. You know what I'm saying? I really don't feel that he's like proven. Well, he's not the DC, right? The DC. No, no, no. I mean, as far as for, yeah, but you know, you know, he's in there to hold his hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, that's that's not his title, but you know, I mean, I mean everybody. He, it wasn't an ideal situation, right? Um, you know, they 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 were looking for a coordinator. Everybody had already hired their coordinators. They reached out to Belichick. He said no. They reached out to uh, the Chiefs Spagnolo. He said no. They reached out to Jeff Olbrick and they got denied by by Robert Sala. Um, they didn't want to bring in somebody and dictate to their staff and have bad chemistry because they felt like that's what happened last year. So they went internally and then they added another guy in Staley. Um, I don't I like know what the I like the internal hire. I just I just feel like if you're gonna do the internal hire, just keep it internal. You know what I mean? It's like what was the point of even getting rid of Wilkston if it was going to go on the outside again? You know what I mean? You could have just, you just could have, I don't know, man. It's just kind of irritating. Well, I, I don't know what Brandon Staley's going to do. Yeah, so. we got to let it run out. We got to we got to see. You know what I mean? We got to see. I mean, as of right now, Big Mo ain't really too happy about that one. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Time, Time will, will tell. tell. Time will tell. To me, no, it's to me it, 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 I was just going to say, to me, it felt kind of like a compromise. It kind of felt like they they wanted they were looking for a specific candidate and they had a real good idea of what they wanted because they just they just got over Steve Wilkes so they they figured out what they don't want but they didn't have a perfect candidate because yeah the, the coaching cycle came and went and a lot of defensive coordinators are already signed with their teams guess they tried to get Jeff Ulbrich or and you know obviously the Jets said no but this was like a candidate that kind of fit both like the two of them together make the perfect candidate because it's like you have a guy who has experienced coaching def as a defensive coordinator, and you also have a guy who's internal, so he knows the internal side. He knows your scheme. Brandon Staley is an experienced head coach slash defensive coordinator, linebacker background. So it, to me, it kind of felt like their resumes put together were, were what the Niners were looking for. So that's kind of why – that's what I thought, at least after that or I heard the news initially. So to build on Kev's point, like, I, I think that maybe if that works, like you were saying, it, it's because, you know, uh, Staley won't be able to lose the locker room like he did in San Diego. You know what I mean? I mean, excuse me, L.A., my bad. But, you know, like how he did over there when they gave up 63 to the Raiders. You know what I mean? So it's like maybe Sorensen is like just the guy that's going to hold the team together. You know what I mean? Just I, I mean, I feel I, I feel where you're coming from, Kev. I understand your uh, concept on that. I mean, I want to see what Staley's role is, and I want to talk to Shanahan about what tasks during the week Staley's going to do. Um, and it could be anything from he's just there as a as a sounding board to he's going to have you know a real say in the scheme every week. And right now we don't know, so it's like it's hard to get up in arms about it. I will say this: I didn't like the way Staley managed games. I didn't like how he went after, you know, went, went for it on fourth down all the time. But I also do think that he is a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more analytics based and maybe Shanahan's a kind of an old school guy. So maybe a little bit more of an analytics based assistant head coach might be a good thing. I, I really don't know. I mean, this is, this to me, is speculation. The other thing I'll say is all this talk about Wilkes and Sorensen, and it really comes down to the dudes. It comes down to the guys, especially on defense. And the 49ers, you know, I thought they their real problem defensively this year is they weren't really good against the run. And that had more to do with Ridgeway leaving, Aziz leaving, uh, Manuel Mosley leaving, Jimmy Ward leaving, Samson Ebukam leaving, Charles Amenehue leaving. I mean, they lost like six good run defenders. So I don't want to put that on Wilkes. I want to put that on the front office. Go get your six good run defender depth back. You know, you went for some star, a star player. That's front, fine. You got a star player up front, but who's a pass rusher. But go find some good 
you know, I'm looking at the fact that the Niners have interviewed Max Melton and Malik Mustafa as just clear as day indications that Lynch gets it, that he needs to have a corner who can flat out hit a safety. who can flat out hit somebody who can step up into the lane and, and create some havoc and separate some guys from the football. I think Melton and Mustafa, um, if they could add those guys in the draft, I'd be really thrilled because Melton hits you like a truck and he's got four, three speed. Mustafa is a really physical safety. And I think they, they lack a little, yeah, we can talk about Ebukam and, you know, Menahue and setting the edge up front and they need more help there, but they also need more guys in their secondary flying up, making big hits. And they only ha- really had Jair Brown back there. Everybody else was just kind of running around kind of, you know, they were in the hole, but they weren't there to do damage. I need more guys on the back end who, who are showing up to wreck guys. And, um, and I think Mustafa and Melton would be perfect. I couldn't agree with you more on that. Yeah, we need, we definitely need some more hammers. You know what I mean? For sure. You know, so more physical run defenders on the back end. 100%. So we talked about the holding hands part. Now we got to get to the kicking cans part. Bro, why are we kicking everybody down the line, man? Sometimes we just got to let people go. You know what I mean? Before we can't get no value. Who are you referring to? Man, well, okay, so I agree with you on the use check. We got to get rid of use check. You know what I mean? And, bro, let, 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 before we start, let me just say this. I love every player that we're talking about right now. I love every player that we're talking about right now. So don't get it twisted. It's not no hate on the player. It ain't because I think they're terrible. And I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. So with use check, bro, he's awesome. He's the best fullback in the league. He's the best at the business at what he does. But we don't have the usage for him. For what the kind of money he's going to make, we don't use him enough. You know what I mean? So yeah, we got to let him go. You know what I mean? And no, that's I, I, I 100% agree with you because I've I've seen the pushback from the 49ers Twitter and the 49ers fan base when you mentioned cutting Kyle Huszczyk. It's like you said, I hate the guy. You know, And it's like, yeah. you have no idea how important he is. And it's like, he's on. I think I saw Jesse do a breakdown on this. He's on the I field saw that too. About, about 50% of the time. Exactly. Like 50% or less. So yeah, it was like 50. I think he said it was like 53% or something like that. It's like, let, yeah. bro, are you just a little over half? Yeah, you know so what I mean? Like we're talking about he's, a lo- he's a luxury item that they can no longer right. afford. Yeah. Okay. That's it. okay. He's so a let, good player. We all know he's a good player. He's just bro, I love it's, not, the guy, it's never been about is he a good player. player. It's about look what, what are you paying? What are you getting? And is it worth that? And it's not. Yes, exactly. Okay, now, Armstead. Bro, I love Armstead, dude. You know what I mean? He is a rock for us. But what we got to pay him versus the usage again and the injuries, you know what I mean? It's like, bro, I, bro, we got, just because we love these guys, sometimes you got to look at the business aspect of it too. And when we hold on to players like this, what ends up happening on the other end is that we don't have the resources to hold on to players like IU that we need to hold on to. Well, one thing you about know, Armstead is he's a major leader and he's a great run defender, but he's I agree a rock. with you. He's I a agree rock. With you. It's too expensive and they got to find his replacement. You know, and then now we get to Juwan Jennings. You know what I mean, bro? I love me some third in Juwan, bro. If you're a 49er fan, bro, how can you not love you some third in Juwan? You know what I'm saying? But the reality of the situation is you can get a replacement for Juwan Jennings easier than you can get a replacement for Brandon Ayuk. And if you really believe that that's not possible, then I don't know what to tell you because Ayuk is one of the best route runners in the league. You know what I mean? He did have an Instagram live on there today. And I jumped on there and I was like, bro, dude, you are him. You know what I'm saying? And I really do hope to, hope that the Niners find a way to work out your deal because I really want to see you on this team. And like I said, I love me some third in Juwan, bro. Don't get it twisted. But, you know, there are casualties at every position, you know. I, I think the fact that they're meeting with these first round and early second round receivers show that they know that one of these receivers is going to get an offer. Either they're going to get an offer for Debo uh, or Juwan's going to get a great, crazy restricted offer that they don't want to match or somebody's going to offer a nice package for Ayuk. 
and Ayuk's going to want the moon. I mean, Ayuk wants to wait till the wide receiver market gets reset. Well, what if it gets reset and they have to pay him $33 million? They don't want to pay him $33 million. They're going to have to let him go. So I just think that so they're going to have to make a really tough decision at wide receiver. I think they're going to keep Ayuk, and I think they're going to move off JJ. Yeah, uh, I mean, if, if it was you guys, off Ebo, but I think it's I think it's going to be Jennings. Well, I'm saying if you guys were in charge and you guys had to make the call, who who would you, Kev? Who would you take, Larry? Who would you take? I'd take Ayuk and I'd move off Jennings. Probably do the same. Yeah, yeah I do the same. I don't like. Yeah, and like I said, bro, I love me some third and Juwan, bro. That dude got heart. You know what I'm saying? That dude is a beast. But, you know, it's like it's all about the casualties, man. And like I said, he don't get enough usage. You know what I'm saying? It's like when he's yeah, used. I think you – yeah. You extend Brandon Ayuk. You make him your number one guy. You, I would say you probably let Debo walk at the end of his contract and just start drafting from there. And you could probably draft a wide receiver this this year and have him be your, your third wide receiver to replace Jawan Jennings. Yeah. 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 And then look, and with Kittle, like, bro, I love me some Kittle, bro. I love me some Kittle. But we can't do that with Kittle anyway because it's like, what are we going to do? We can't move Kittle. We can't trade Kittle. We need Kittle. You know what I mean? The, the, what, what's I, the would, I would keep Kittle for one more year. But that's what I'm saying. We need Kittle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people talk about, oh, we should have got rid of Kittle, this and that. It's like, bro, like, dude, we missed that window a year ago if we are going to do that. You know, know what I'm saying? I know. No, you're right. You're totally right. But I love Kittle too, bro. So Kittle need to stay. You know what I'm saying? Kittle got to stay. We need him. Yep. Flat out. Yep. We he he it gives the offense swagger. Um, if 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 they had hit on um, you know, Cam Latou, <sighs> then they could move on from Kittle. But they missed on they Cam missed. Latou. At least so, until proven otherwise. So Kittle stays. So you've been around the camps. You've been around the players. What you think, Cam Latou going to? Uh, make a turnaround or you think it's just no i think cam latu's head was spinning because the niners mentally asked the tight ends to do so much and i just think that he was thinking he wasn't reacting he'll show up in camp this year he'll be worlds better worlds better big mo we gotta we gotta jump kev's gotta go study we're two hours in they told him we do an hour Gentlemen, always a pleasure, bro. You know, I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, everybody out there, bro, uh, hope you all gentlemen and uh, ladies and everybody out in Ninerland, hope you all have a good night. And y'all better take your uh, rear ends to the pig in the pickle, baby. <laughs> Big Mo, easy. All right, that does it for us. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to our callers. Thanks to our uh, our chatters. Um, thanks to all of you guys. Have a great night. Um, what do we got cooking on the channel on Thursday? Let me see here. If we have that in front of me, we can tell people about what we got tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, Jesse, me and Vish do the big show and we'll do some videos in the daytime. Um, and then Friday, uh, Damon Bruce will be back. Chase senior Saturday, the coach. We got a lot more for you as we get closer to the draft. For Kev, I'm Larry. Have a great night, everybody. Peace.